This video is sponsored by MCRU, manufacturers of the mains distribution block and power cords used by a British audiophile. For more information, click the link in the description and use discount code BA10 for 10% off your order. I recently reviewed a couple of speakers that had ribbon tweeters that I really liked. The £5,000 Alta Audio Alessas are superbly detailed speakers that disappear in the room. They have a natural mid-range that surprisingly eludes many high-end speakers. The £6,395 Kerr Acoustic K300 Mark III's trade a little bit of the resolution of the Alessas for a bit more harmonic richness and greater dynamics. Those two sets of speakers will no doubt fight it out for top honours in my end of year awards in the above £3,000 category and to tell you the truth I could live with either one of them and they're probably the only two sets of speakers above £3,000 that I've reviewed that I can confidently say that about. So what about speakers below £3,000? Well here for 25 years my Product Response 1 SEs have remained my reference. Many of the attributes that I love about the outer audios and the curves are largely present in my Proax in a smaller more affordable package. Regular viewers will know that I've reviewed a lot of speakers below £3,000 in an attempt to replace my 1SCs. A couple of them have come close to offering me what I want, but I wouldn't trade my Proax for any of them. Today I'm reviewing another pair of speakers that feature a ribbon tweeter, but at a much lower price. That normally gives me cause for concern, for reasons you'll discover later. But when I looked into the design and what they did, these look really promising. So, two questions. How much of the performance of the Outer Audio Alessas and the Kerr Acoustic K300s do these quad speakers deliver for less than two grand? And are they better than my Proax? The Quad Revella 1 speakers retail for £1,799 in the UK. There are also the floor standing Revella 2s available in the range for £3,499. There's a pure black finish or one with side and rear panels finished in a high gloss walnut. As a personal preference, I'd like to see matte black combined with the gloss walnut to bring the bling factor down for us more conservative types. No mistake, these speakers look great from the side, but from the front, which is pretty much what you're looking at when you're listening, you can't see any of the real wood veneer. That's a shame. One of my favourite looking speakers of all time is the Sonus Faber Concerto. I can't help imagining that having the wood veneer extend over the heavily radius edges would have given the Ravellas a similar aesthetic. I can't fault the build quality though, these are very well put together, measuring 395 by 246 by 312 millimetres and weighing approximately 11 kilograms, that's 15.5 by 9.7 by 12.5 inches and 24 pounds. The 165 mm 6.5 inch midwoofer cone is made from a wood pulp doped with mainly para aramid materials to add rigidity and damping. That's the stuff that bulletproof vests are made from. The driver was developed from scratch for the Revella project. The proprietary cone material is termed reveal, but the midwoofer unit also features a die cast chassis and substantial magnet structure. The tweeter is a 60mm 2.4 inch pure ribbon. They tend to be super fast, but can be difficult to integrate with conventional cone mid-range and bass drivers. However, Quad have some pedigree in this field. In fact, the very first speaker that Peter Walker developed for Quad back in 1949 was called the Quad Corner Ribbon Speaker. I guess it does what it says on the tin. The design has evolved over the years and this tweeter was developed from the one found in the Junior Z series. The magnet structure and waveguide have been tweaked to improve linearity and bandwidth whilst lowering distortion. The crossover point is at 2900 Hz and follows close to an acoustic Butterworth third order slope, deviating a little on the first octave below the midwoofer to gain a better off axis performance. On the rear is one set of heavy duty speaker binding posts, which I much prefer to two sets of cheap ones that many speakers have. There's also a ridged flared port to reduce turbulence in the departing airflow. I know, some of that tech stuff goes over some people's heads, 
But I did want to do a separate technical section on this occasion. I've pretty much covered what I'd say in that section here in any case. But what I did want to talk about is how IAG go about designing their products. IAG is the company that owns Quad, but they also own Wharfdale, Mission, Castle, Audio Lab, and Leak. Peter Como is the director of acoustics, overseeing development of speakers for all IAG brands. I emailed him to find out how IAG go about developing their products. There's one design team in Huntington, England, and another one in Shenzhen, China. They work together to develop their products. Each brand has its own house sound and brand values. And ultimately, it's Peter Como's responsibility to make sure that that remains the case. For Quad, those values are to maintain an even-handed, well-balanced and revealing nature, best typified by their electrostatic speakers. The closest approach to the original sound is the strap line. In the case of the Ravella project, all the initial design and acoustic work was done in Huntingdon and the prototyping and production engineering done in Shenzhen. That makes sense because you're utilizing the expertise in the UK whilst all the heavy lifting is done in China to keep production costs low. Anyway, I thought that was worth sharing, but enough about that. How do these things sound? Okay, so let me start by putting my biases on the table. In the past, I've struggled with speakers in this price category that use ribbon tweeters, and the same is true for AMT tweeters. I know, they're not the same thing, but they are closely related. I understand why manufacturers use them at higher price points. A ribbon tweeter, and to a slightly lesser extent an AMT, have a much lower moving mass than a dome tweeter, which means that they can move faster, extending further up the frequency range whilst offering lower distortion. But they have different dispersion characteristics compared to conventional cone drivers, typically very wide in the horizontal plane, but fairly narrow in the vertical plane. And that means that a lot of skill is required in the crossover design to ensure the smooth transition from the midwoofer to the tweeter. And because ribbon tweeters are so fast, especially compared to inexpensive cone drivers, you can normally hear the tweeter taking over from a pedestrian midwoofer. It's like, there's the midwoofer, and there's the tweeter. And once you've heard that, you can't unhear it. There are exceptions, of course. The neat petite classics that retail for £1,999 do a fine job of integrating drivers, but there's still a little bit of disconnect between the mid-range and the high frequencies. The blending of drivers is even better with the quad speakers. That's a testament to not only how well the crossover must be designed, but also how capable that new reveal midwoofer is. There's exceptional levels of detail across the frequency range. The bass is tight and agile. There's a crisp transient to mid-range and just enough body to give a natural sound without sounding colored. Also a realistic decay to notes. The handover from mids to highs is as smooth as if Johan Blake was passing the baton to Usain Bolt in a 100 meter relay. This is the 2012 London Olympic final, by the way. The Neat Petite Classics rival the quads when it comes to data retrieval, and they are the best sound staging and imaging speakers that I've heard in their class, even though the Ravella ones aren't far behind. But the little Neats have that touch of leanness in the mid-range and that slight discontinuity between the two drivers that I spoke about earlier. As for my reference speakers, in the wood finish, the Amphion Argon ones are £300 less than the Ravella ones, but they sound like the class below. The mid-range is thinner, and you don't hear as much of the recordings. The million dollar question, how do they compare to my vintage Proax? Are these going to finally be the speakers to surpass my 1SCs in their own price sector? In some ways, yes, the quads have a cleaner base and a more open top end that makes them more punishing of poor recordings, but there's no lack of refinement with good recordings. They're also a little bit more spicy in the mid-range, and that initially gives the impression that you're hearing more detail, but it's actually that vocals and lead instruments step a little bit closer to you. In reality, it's my 1SEs that unearth a little bit more micro detail and textures. There's more space between instruments, the sound stage is wider, and deeper. For the sake of context, they aren't going to slay the best speakers I've heard at five or six grand. The outer audio lessers offer better detail, refinement, instrument separation, and dynamics. It's a similar case with the Kerr Acoustics K300 Mark III's, which have a warmer tone 
and hit significantly harder in the nether regions. They're better across the board, as they should be at three and a half times the price. Those references are provided so people don't get carried away, but they're not fair. The Quadravella ones need to be compared with speakers in their own class, and here they may not surpass my Proact Response 1 SEs in every way, but they're clearly a match for them. It's pretty easy to simply place the Quadravella ones in your room and get good results. They also have a fairly generous sweet spot. Both those things suggest that these speakers have a smooth off-axis performance. But in order to get great results, you need a bit of flexibility with positioning to move the speakers away from walls, adjust the distance between them and the toe angle. They play great at low volumes and they'll go as loud as most people will need them to. I rarely play for extended periods above 85 dBs because I value my hearing too much. As for partnering equipment, these are highly resolving speakers that will show up any shortcomings in the gear that you partner with them. Whatever you put in is what you're going to get out, but that doesn't mean that you have to spend fortunes. It just means that you need good quality gear. They were singing with my Wilsonton R8, which can deliver up to 45 watts per channel running KT88 power tubes in ultralinear mode. Tube amplifiers typically have a low damping factor, but bass control was not a problem. I'm just glad I've upgraded the tubes from Tungsol and PS Vane across all three stages of the amp. The lack of detail and refinement would have been apparent from the R8 in stock form. My Exposure 2510 has a fluidity in the mid-range that can be beguiling if you get the right speakers, and these quad speakers work like a treat. The Hegel H190 offered better detail, control, and a wider soundstage, but I did miss the spiritedness of the Wilsonton and the sweetness of the Exposure. Hooking them up to my vintage Exposure 21 Pre and 18 Super Monoblocks was where I was able to discover that the Ravella ones could go toe-to-toe -to -toe with my Proact Response 1 SCs. Let's face it, the equivalent Proacts today are quite a bit more expensive, and I'm not sure they're as good as my 1 SCs, so the ability of these Ravella ones to scale up for a sub 2,000 pound speaker, in my experience, is unprecedented. Quad's mission to remain faithful to the original sound seems well preserved in the hands of the IAG design teams headed up by Peter Como. The Rella ones are exquisitely detailed, wonderfully natural sounding speakers with an even handed tone. Some care needs to be taken with partnering equipment to ensure that it's up to the task. They will highlight inadequacies in whatever you connect to them as well as what you play through them. But that's what a decent sounding hi-fi system will do if you get things right. I see these speakers being the final destination for a lot of people on their journey. They're the best speakers that I've heard sub 2,000 pounds. They're the best speakers I reviewed sub 3,000 pounds, although there are two or three other contenders that I still have to check out. Let me put things this way. If I didn't own my Proact Response 1 SEs, these are the speakers that I'd have in my house. And for me, praise doesn't come any higher than that. Quadravella ones get an outstanding from this channel. I don't believe that most people know where their hi-fi journey will take them. I certainly don't. Experience and budgets shift the goalpost and the sky is the limit. But if you could freeze frame now, where do you see the summit? My question for today is, what are the products that you really aspire to own and why? Please let me know in the comment section. All that remains for me to say is, if you like this video, you like what I'm doing with this channel, you want to see it grow, and assuming you haven't done so already, please like, share, subscribe, hit the bell notification, check me out on Patreon, there's a couple of consultancy tiers you can access there if you think I can help you on your audio file journey. Also check out the ABA Club on Patreon, which has some great ways to interact with me and fellow Patreons. But for today, for now, British Audiophile, signing off.